many Danes are so averse to talking to strangers. Of course, the Danes didn't like that. It's very hard to guess Danish. In this video, I will tell you the 11 main reasons why Danes might not like you. Or, in other words, which 11 things really piss off the Danes. What the hell is your problem? In general, Danes are cool headed, friendly, and calm. But certain things can trigger them into passive aggressiveness towards you or straight out outbursts of anger. To avoid both, you need to watch this video to the end. This video will help you navigate Danish culture more smoothly, whether you are an expat trying to integrate or a tourist just trying not to anger the locals. So let's get started. My name is Steven Højlund and I'm a Danish national born, raised and living here in Denmark. So I know a thing or two about what triggers the Danish emotions. The easiest way to piss off a Dane is to be late. In Denmark, being late is a sign of disrespect of other people's time. And even worse, Danes might bucket you as a laggard or an unreliable person altogether. Luckily, the unwritten rules are quite simple. First of all, be punctual or be 15 minutes late at the max. And if you really cannot make it on time, then write a text message in due time. So like say 15 minutes at least before. Likewise, if you're inviting Danish people over, expect them to be on time. That means that you have to be ready at the time you mentioned in the invite. So if you said come around at 7 o'clock or 7 p.m., Danes will be there at 7 p.m. Let's say you are invited over by your Danish friends. This is the perfect opportunity for pissing your new Danish friends off in multiple ways. It starts in the door. One certain way to piss off your Danish hosts are by not taking off your shoes. Danes hate when someone just walks straight into their home with outdoor shoes on. They have just spent the whole day preparing their perfect home for a perfect evening and now dirt is being dragged in. Or even worse, your Danish hosts recently had their wooden floor sanded and now you ruin it with your high heels, making these small dents and marks. How to avoid this situation? That's pretty easy. Just ask in advance, is it okay to wear heels or shoes inside? Generally, it's okay to wear shoes if it's a party where everyone is dressed up like the New Year's party, for example, and you have like sort of matching shoes with your tie and, uh, you know, the penguin. But most important, you just have to ask in advance and don't forget to do that. You can also bring some extra indoor shoes and that's also fine. Okay, you got the shoes right and haven't been asked to leave just yet. But you can still mess it up in so many other ways when you're meeting up with the Danes. Danes really don't like people that are full of themselves. In Denmark, humility is key. Danes value modesty and we have a saying, don't think that you're better than us. Which is the essence of the 10 commandments in the law of Yende, which you might have heard about. The law of Yende was coined in the book by the Norwegian writer Axel Sandemosen, a refugee crosses his own tracks or crosses his tracks from 1933. This saying or phrase is used to denote a social attitude of disapproval towards expressions of individuality and personal success. Axel Sandemose used it to describe the narrow-minded culture of a small Danish fisherman's town, but it was so descriptive of the Danish and Scandinavian egalitarian cultures that, and maybe also unambitious cultures, that it still lingers on and is used as a reference today. One example of this is the Danish millionaires. Even though entrepreneurs and nouveau riche uh, people often publicly like to denounce the law of Yende, it's still uncommon to show off your wealth in Denmark. Millionaires and old money in Denmark will often be very modest about it and sometimes you won't even see Danes with money stand out in any way from the crowd. So if you come across as bragging or overly confident in Denmark, it will be seen as arrogant. 
Danes don't care much about your job title. They care about whether you're a decent human being altogether and if you're interesting. So focus on building genuine con connections rather than flaunting your resume. The trick here is to be understated and let your actions speak for themselves. That will gain you the respect from the Danes. This brings me to my next point. Don't be superficial, be genuine. Danes can spot a fake from a mile away or some kilometers away. Danes are not easily captivated by an impressive story of success or promises of gold at the end of some rainbow. Danes value authenticity and honesty in their relationships. If you're trying too hard to impress, it's likely Danes will pick up on it very quickly and it won't go down so well. So just be yourself. In fact, a way to show authenticity is to speak openly about a challenge in your life that you are dealing with currently. That will give you immediate points with the Danes and who knows, maybe the conversation might actually be a little bit more interesting while talking over some of these challenges that you have. Danes don't like beating around the bush too much. If you say something, you better be sincere about it. The Danish culture is direct and so is the language. If you ask a Danish person, how are you? The person will start answering the question in a genuine and thorough manner. If you show no interest in hearing the answer, a Dane will think, uh, why did he bother asking the question in the first place then? Or worse, why is this person not reciprocating my openness towards him? Once I had this American co-worker who always asked me this question in the morning, Soon after I started telling him how I was, uh, he would simply interrupt me, stating that he had to go to a meeting or something, and then walk off. Well, needless to say, we never made friends. So, <clears throat> to most Danes, it's very rude to first ask someone to tell a personal story, like how, how are you, and then walk out showing no interest in hearing the, uh, the answer to this quite personal question. Other meaningless English niceties that you should avoid uh, is the phrase uh, we should do this another time as sort of a nice phrase to say when you're walking out the door. If the Dane agreed to the statement that it was actually nice and you and he, he wants to meet you, he will start looking in his calendar for a vacant time some months into the future where you can actually meet again. So uh, be careful there. Danes are straight shooters. Do what you say and say what you do. Danes don't like if you chomp your food. You know the noise it makes if you chew on your food with your mouth open? Danes don't like that sound. And you only make matters worse if you try talking with food in your mouth. While this is probably the same in many cultures, it might not be equally frowned upon by all. So that's why I thought I would include it in this video as well. So close your mouth, don't talk, just eat. Things like their public space, calm and predictable. They like to mind their own business uninterrupted. Therefore, you should not move close to a Dane in public space unless there are no other seating options. Danes really value their personal space. Also, don't be loud. Danes are not extroverted and excited in public and they talk a monotonous language with little intonation. So you will stand out if you are loud. Americans are probably among the loudest tourist nations, I would say, but since Danes understand what is being said, it's also kind of entertaining to just listen in on the conversations. So Americans, just keep on chatting. Danes hate when you interrupt their conversations. It's considered very rude and intrusive to interrupt a conversation in Denmark. This is actually a problem because Danes are not good at ending their conversations and starting other conversations with the people in the groups around them at a party, for example. That makes it difficult for newcomers to the party to join in and integrate in conversations at the party. There's nothing else you can do rather than wait for the conversation to be over or gain the attention of the most extroverted and socially intelligent Dane who might then include you into the conversation. This might also be the host um, person. Honestly, Danes are very bad at mingling and sometimes I would even advise you just to interrupt the conversation uh, even though you might get the looks because otherwise you, you will not break through the rule. If you want to really piss off a Dane, then don't follow the biking rules. 
things are generally calm and composed even in their cars and in the traffic but if you stand in the way on the biking lanes they don't take it lightly especially jaywalking on the bike paths will very quickly earn you looks and maybe some shouting as well it's time well spent to understand the biking rules and make sure you don't walk into the ongoing traffic Danes don't always follow the rules themselves, so you will survive, I'm pretty sure. But now you know why they are shouting at you. Danes don't like if you critique Denmark. While Danes are critically minded and can absorb some overall criticisms towards their mother country, the royal family and maybe the taxes, there are limits. After a bit of poking, you will most likely experience that most Danes are very proud of their country. And in their point of view, Denmark is sort of superior to most other countries, the best country in the world. Therefore, it will piss off a Dane if you decide to go all in on criticizing the country altogether, especially if you don't know what you're talking about. So be gentle with the Danes if you have some truth to speak about Mother Denmark. Danes find it really strange if you don't speak Danish after having lived in Denmark for 20 or so years. Danes know that their language is hard to learn and they also know that there aren't that many good reasons for actually learning it. So they are okay with the fact that you don't get to speak it fluently right after landing in Copenhagen airport or maybe even five years down the road. However, if you haven't made the effort and still don't speak Danish after say 10 or 20 years, then you're just plain out ridiculous to a Dane. So, what do you think? Are Danes too sensitive? Write it in the comments below. If you're planning a visit uh, to Denmark or moving here altogether, I highly recommend my two videos. The first one is what will shock you about Denmark and the Danes and the other one is 10 reasons of not moving to Denmark altogether. You can find the videos here. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want to have a notification next time I make a video. Maybe you learn something, maybe you won't. At least I hope you enjoyed this video, you stuck around to the end, so I will just say until next time, take care.